Hello, everybody. We're going to get started in just a minute here. Um, if you want to get situated, get any pencil or paper out, if you're going to be taking notes, uh, we'll, we'll get started momentarily. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Okay, we're going to get started. Welcome to Fundraising Strategies for Give Back Tahoe Giving Season 2019. Welcome to the second webinar of this year's giving season. My name is Lisa Galperin. I'm the Community Engagement Manager at Mighty Cause. Today, we're going to be going over campaign strategies for your giving Tahoe, Give Back Tahoe season. But first, we'll be going over some basics for those of you who missed the first webinar that talked a little bit more about how to get started on your platform, what to look for. So to get started and just to review some of the basic information about the platform. So for all, for all of you who haven't registered yet, you'll want to make sure that you've completed the registration form on Give Back Tahoe by October 15th. The Community Foundation will be approving all organizations and for any new nonprofit or any returning nonprofit, similar to last year, you can always add or remove any additional administrators to your page. Administrators have the ability to manage, edit your page, and you can have as many as you want as well as manage by removing and adding additional administrators to your page. When you log into your organization profile page as an administrator, you'll notice on the left-hand side area of your page, there is a navigation dashboard. That's where you'll be able to edit and manage your entire organization on Mighty Cause. For those that are returning to the platform, you'll notice that we've made a couple of updates to the dashboard to make it even easier to manage and go through. So just to recap each section of the dashboard, the home area is where you can get a quick glimpse into metrics on your organization, either by month or by year, as well it will provide you a to-do list to review if you want to enter any new information. If I mean, if you're a new organization on the platform, it provides you just some basic information to fill out on your organization. Profile allows you to customize your organization page, add a thermometer, and make any necessary edits you want on your profile page. Reports gives you access to donor data and as well as the ability to download donations reports. You can also manage recurring donations and offline donations through this section. Fundraising allows you to review and manage all fundraising efforts, customize your donor experience, as well, within the fundraising section, you'll be able to manage all of your volunteer opportunities. And lastly, the settings section allows you to manage your organization's presence on Give Back Tahoe by adding in a, your social sharing information, customizing your URL, or adding EFT information. As I just mentioned, on your homepage, 
There's a to-do list for any new organization to the platform. This to-do list will give you a breakdown of some key things that you wanna fill out to make your page ready for Give Back Tahoe. Some of those key things that we ask organizations to fill out is your background image, logo, adding in a description or story, adding in a thank you page and setting up your EFT. If you fill out just those basics on the page, you should be good to go for the event. As you fill those sections out, they will be checked marked on your homepage so you know that you've completed it. Again, this is not required for you to complete in order to participate, but it's a great guide for you to get started. Customizing your profile page is critically important because this is the page where majority of you will be sending to your supporters. So it's your job to use this page to encourage your donors to make that gift. When they're on this page, they're gonna be deciding whether they want to make a donation or how much of a donation that they want. And you have loads of opportunities to customize the look and feel of the page with your page editor. You can add in a new background image, you can upload photos, videos, choose a theme color that matches your logo. And for those returning nonprofits, I challenge you to think of a new story to tell your donors on your profile page. What's new information you can add on there that isn't repetitive or reiterate what you say on your website? What can you share with them that will motivate them to give to your organization specifically for Give Back Tahoe? So in general, you wanna make sure that you're reviewing this page and making sure it's all up to date and exactly sharing what information you want for donors to see. As well, you'll wanna make sure that you'll go over the donor experience section of your dashboard. The donor experience area is you can find under the fundraising section on your dashboard. And this allows you to edit the checkout flow on your donation page. You can choose what donor data to collect. You can add in donation suggestions or descriptions, and you can always preview the donation checkout flow through this area. Most importantly, one of the steps in that to-do list that I mentioned is the ability to add in a thank you page or customize your thank you page, as well as customizing your thank you receipt on, um, on your donation receipt that's sent out. You can add in a CTA, videos, images, any text that you want, and make sure that you're going over there and reviewing it, making sure all of that information is up to date. Again, that can be found under fundraising and donor experience. One of the resources that's available to you currently on the Give Back Tahoe website is the toolkit. And the toolkit will have a lot of great tips and how to's on how you can make your page as, um, uh, how you can make your campaign a better success than it was last year. And use this page, um, borrow as much as you can to make your campaign as impactful as it was last year. One of the other things that for all of those organizations that will be utilizing volunteer opportunities uh, is the volunteer management tool. And that's one of the great things that's really important about Give Back Tahoe is the ability to connect nonprofits with volunteers. So under volunteer opportunities, which is available under fundraising on your left-hand side dashboard and under volunteers, you'll be able to post volunteer opportunities directly on your organization page and supporters will be able to sign up for those opportunities here. What's great about that tool is that you can add as much or as little information about that volunteer opportunity as you want. If you wanna upload a, a document that donors have to sign uh, or complete before they volunteer, if you wanna add key qualifications, address, the amount of positions that you'll have available, all of that can be listed in the opportunity. This is what the volunteer opportunity will look like on your organization page when donors come onto your page. They'll be able to see exactly what you have available, 
they can click into it and see more information on there and they can sign up directly. You'll receive a notification when a donor or a supporter has signed up for a volunteer opportunity and they will receive a reminder when the volunteer opportunity uh, is about to begin. So this is also a great way to leverage the supporters that are coming onto your page for Give Back Tahoe. Great. So now that we've gone over some basics that we spoke a little bit about during the last webinar, let's get more detailed about the campaign strategy and how you can become successful this year with a couple of easy tips and tricks. So the first thing that you want to do is you want to map out your campaign with mini goals. Ideally, your organization will have composed your ultimate fundraising goal or what are some goals that you have that you want to complete by the end, but think about some small goals that you can complete throughout the giving season. And this doesn't have to be a numerical amount. It doesn't have to be an amount raised. This could be maybe you want to increase the amount of followers you have on Instagram or the amount of recurring donors that you receive this year as opposed to last year. Map out those goals and share those goals with your followers throughout the campaign. This is a great opportunity to build excitement and generate some interest with donors, especially since your giving season is from the 3rd to the 31st. How can you keep people engaged? How can you keep people motivated to give during the season and for them to see the progress of your organization throughout that time? So sit down with your team and compose of some ideas or goals that you guys can come up with that you can complete throughout the giving season. And that's a great way to first get started in coming up with a plan for your campaign. So most of you are familiar with matching grants and Mighty Cause provides a matching grant tool on our platform for you to provide that information to donors and to collect matching grants on here. And when you're considering securing a matching grant, you'll first want to think about who could provide a matching grant. So you want a prospect for those donors. And that can be a board member, it can be a major donor, it could be a local business, a corporate sponsor. And also the key thing to remember is that a matching grant doesn't have to be a huge amount. A matching grant can be as small as $100, $50, or as large as $10,000. Um, the key thing about a matching grant is that it provides the ability to share with donors that their donation can make an even larger impact. And with our tool, we provide you with the ability to create different styles of matching grants. The most common one is obviously dollar for dollar match, but with our new matching grants update that we've done and over the past couple of months, you also have the opportunity to do a match based off the number of donations re you've received. You can set different um, settings, such as setting a maximum amount for each donation, uh, and you can include offline donations towards your match. So there's a lot of great opportunities to either share a local business's logo, information, maybe a board member's information, uh, and it's a great opportunity, again, as I said, to show donors how much of an impact their don donation will happen during the giving season. Because of the impact that this matching grant can have, you'll want to make sure that you're promoting your matching grant if you have secured one. So if you have secured a matching grant or you are planning on securing a matching grant, relay that to your donors. Relay that you are currently looking for a match or that you have secured a match and let them know the urgency of that match. If your match is set for a certain day or for a certain time period, let them know that that is the time span that you have to complete that match. Of course, share that information on social media and as well in all of your email campaigns. So outside of a matching grant, you want to consider how you can engage your ambassadors. Now, ambassadors can mean a lot of different things. For some, ambassadors are volunteers, and for others, those are your board members. Um, so think about how you can engage your ambassadors this year. 
Ambassadors also provide you an opportunity to share impactful stories that are outside of the story that you as the organization are sharing. People that are, consider themselves ambassadors for your organization have a reason why they consider your organization important to them. So let them share that story. As well, engaging your ambassadors provides you an opportunity to expand your network. Um, and the image on the right-hand side that you see here displays the impact that a peer-to-peer that peer-to-peer -peer fundraising can do for your organization. And we're gonna talk about that in a second, about how you can utilize our platform to increase the amount of donors you have, to increase your impact and your outreach through peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. So let's go more in depth about peer-to-peer -peer fundraising and how you can utilize that on the platform. So peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, can involve anyone. So similar to a matching grant as to who you're going to reach out to, that same list of people can go for peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. So it could be your board members, your volunteers, staff, program alumni. You can start there and then grow further. Our peer-to-peer -peer fundraising tools provides you an easy way to share information with your participants so that it's super easy for them to participate and get involved. And as I just mentioned, it allows them to share a story about your organization's impact and share their own personal story about why they find the mission of your organization so important. Our team fundraising tool on the platform allows you to build a peer-to-peer -peer fundraising page. And what's great about this team fundraising tool is that it's really easy to build and manage on the platform. So here's an example of a board peer-to-peer -peer fundraiser. So this fundraiser was specifically designed for the board of the Animal Humane Society. This team fundraiser allows you to also build and create competition between the people that are participating in the fundraising event. Now, for those of you who are concerned about the competition aspect of it, you can always rank your leaderboard by name so that it's not as competitive uh, as other peer-to-peer -peer fundraising campaigns. You can actually have multiple peer-to-peer -peer fundraising campaigns happening at a time. So if you want a peer-to-peer -peer campaign that's specifically for your board and specifically for your volunteers, you can do so as well. And as I mentioned, we provide tools on the platform that make it really easy for people to participate. For example, as an organizer of the campaign, you can create a template so that whenever someone comes on and joins your team, all of their information is auto-populated for them. So their image, their title, their description, their goal amount is already added on there, and they really don't have to do anything else except for publishing their page and sharing it with their friends and families. As well, we provide you additional tools to be able to communicate and manage all of the campaigns that are happening within the peer-to-peer -peer campaign. So within the team fundraising tool, you can actually message all of your participants, maybe send them a congratulations on their first donation, um, congratulate them on meeting their goal, et cetera. So really there's no harm in trying it out and it's really as easy um, as you want it to be for participants. So once you have your peer-to-peer -peer fundraising strategy currently set in stone and you have your matching grants, you'll want to think about your email strategy and how you can properly communicate to your donors your campaigns that you have going on, the matching grants that you've secured, et cetera. The key to email strategy is to make it short and simple. Your donors are have their own lives, they have families, they have work. They may not be up to date in all the nuances that are going on in your organization. So you wanna make sure that your statements are short and straight to the point. As well, 
instead of sending one email to all of your donors, you wanna consider segmenting your audiences. Download a list of all of the donor, donors that donated last year and see what kind of messaging you can send out to those as opposed to some new donors that you wanna reach out to. As well, as I mentioned, donors have their own lives, have their own families, so you wanna consider also scheduling and timing your donations so that donors are receiving those emails maybe when they're coming home from work or during lunchtime, et cetera. When you're composing your emails, just like you do on your organization page as you're reviewing and making sure it's up to date, you wanna make sure that your emails are mobile friendly. A lot of people now review their emails on their phones. So if you're sharing any images, any links, any donate buttons, you wanna make sure that you're testing all of that beforehand so that when a donor opens that link up in their email, it looks great, everything's working perfectly, et cetera. And of course, you wanna have a clear call to action. You wanna have a clear action for them as to what to do. Maybe it's make a specific donation amount, maybe it's signing up to be a volunteer, et cetera. So as I just mentioned about segmenting your donors and making sure that you're emailing the right donors, the right messaging, on our platform, we've, we've added a donor retention report. So in order for you to review how many of your donors donated last year have donated this year, on your homepage, you can actually get a quick glance as to your donor retention percentage. And this is a great way to keep track as to how your organization is doing this year as compared to last year. So on the homepage or on the home screen, this will give you a quick overview and a quick glance. But if you want further information or you wanna get more in depth and see all of those specific donors that have donated last year, you can go to your donor retention report. Now your donor retention report is also located on the report section of your dashboard and is located under donor retention report. As you see, you can actually pull up your Give Back Tahoe 2019 Giving Day report period, and you can see how many donors have donated this year and how many you have retained. You can pull up and be um, extremely detailed and see how many have not retained, how many are retained, and you can export this information as well. So utilize this throughout your giving season to keep track of those donors and making sure that you're sending specific outreach to the donors that you're finding on this list. In addition to your email marketing strategy, you also wanna consider what you will be doing on social media for the day. Now, obviously the most common social media areas are Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, now we have TikTok but really consider where are your donors going? You don't necessarily have to post on every single social media platform that you have an account on. You wanna make sure though you're posting on the pages where your donors are engaging with the most. Once you have decided or you've pinpointed those specific social media areas, you want to consider what type of post that you're posting as well as when you will posting them, when you will be posting them. On social media what's great is that we you, there are a lot of platforms that allow you to schedule posts ahead of time. So consider scheduling ahead of time so that during the giving season uh, it, your life is made a little bit easier for you. And as well, this is a great opportunity to consider looking over your mar marketing budget and seeing if there's an opportunity to budget for some boosted posts, especially during the giving season. There are also lots of platforms available such as Animoto, et cetera, that allow you to create engaging content for your social media. Video is a great example of a way that lots of donors or supporters um, love engaging with so consider what you can do now before the giving season starts and what you can have planned. And always in your social media content, you always wanna have a call to action link. 
So you always want to provide donors a place that they can go and make a donation. Where can they go sign up for a volunteer opportunity? Uh, what can they do to help support your organization? And also make sure that you're sharing the give back to ho hashtag um, and information so that everyone knows about um, that you're participating in Give Back Tahoe giving season. And of course, lastly, you also want to start considering what your follow up will be. Uh, so for those donors that are donating the first time this year, you want to make sure that you're reaching out to them so that that one single donor becomes a donor that can become a volunteer in the future. You don't want to neglect or let go of any of those donors that donated this year. And especially since your giving season ends on the 31st, uh, sometimes in January, February, March, things start to cool down during, you know, after the new year, it's a great opportunity to reach back out to those donors and see how they can participate or support your organization in a different way. But of course, it's really important to communicate with those donors so that when Give Back Tahoe 2020 comes around, uh, you know, those donors are prepared and know um, and are ready to give again for your 2020 season. So that was a recap of all of the fundraising strategies and basics on the platform. I'm going to leave a couple of minutes for uh, for questions, you can use the GoToWebinar control panel uh, to ask any questions you have about the plant platform. It can be about campaign strategies, it can be technical questions. So feel free to use this time to ask away any questions that you have. So one question that we have is about offline donations and if they can be or can't be applied to a match. So this year we have made that update where offline donations can be included in your match. So that's something that you can choose or not choose when you go to create a match. So when you go and create a match either through your fundraising page or your organization page, you'll see that there's a lot of um, things that you can pick and choose of what you wanna include or um, not include. And one of those things that will be automatically enabled this year is that an offline donations will be included. If for some reason you don't wanna include that, you can always uncheck that and offline donations won't be included in your match. One thing to note though, is that offline donations and matching grants are still not, will not be included in prize totals. So although it will be updated on your, um, your metrics and donors will be able to see that total amount, your prize will not include offline donations or matching grants. Another question that we have coming in is where can we find this information afterwards? So the slide deck will be available after this webinar on the Give Back Tahoe website. As well, we'll have a video of this webinar on the Give Back Tahoe website as well. Okay, so there's one other question about how to create a team fundraising page. So if you are interested in peer-to-peer -peer fundraising this year, how you can create a team fundraising page. So if you are on your organization page, you'll see at the top that there is a plus icon. Uh, it's towards the left-hand side of your page. If you place your mouse over that plus icon, a dropdown will open up and will give you the options to start a fundraiser, start an event, start a team. And all you have to do is select start a team and that will prompt you to create a team fundraising page for your organization. Uh, if you have any further questions about creating a team fundraiser or anything else uh, in regards to the platform, please feel free to contact our support team uh, it's support at mightycause.com. We're more than happy to help either provide you any um, you know, information that you need, any technical help, et cetera. Okay, so it looks like that's the end of the questions that we have so far. Uh, again, this information will be on the Give Back Tahoe website. Please let us know if you need any help or anything. We're always here to help. 
all right thank you so much and have a wonderful day bye